Hello everybody, we Paddy from Across the Shock. Another wee video today and uh, this is uh, a couple of new additions which is these two knives to my fledgling um, antique knives that I've started collecting. And look, I'm not sure whether you like these or not. So please let me know down below whether you like these sort of videos or not and I'll keep doing them or not because I'm going to keep collecting them because I'm loving... Maybe not so much even the history, but just finding out what other knives, what people would have carried in their daily lives a hundred years plus ago. Now, a couple of these are mid last century, but the top three are early 1900s, late 1800s. These, this one is an early 1900. In fact, I can date this one exactly to 1911. This one, I believe, is the late 1800s. But Again, with a lot of these things, you're not completely sure. But they're both, I would near enough guarantee, they're both over 100 years old, which is wonderful. That's what I want. It's just a bit of history. I, I'm not going to be buying hundreds of them, but I am going to keep on buying them because it's another side of this damn collecting bug I've got. I just, <laughs> I'm just so interested in different knives and what people would have carried. Look, we carry big knives now because we think that's what we need for our daily lives. When... In fact, that I know in my life, I don't necessarily need a big knife. You know, a little knife like this, that's got two blades, a lovely Warncliffe, a pen blade, still got great snap on them for the age they are. Them two, them two blades would do my day most days. And, you know, and that's a hundred year old knife. So I think sometimes we get caught up on who we are and what we're doing, but how many times in a day could that knife not get through what you want to get through? It's carbon steel blades, probably not the best in the world, but they just sharpen so easily. So anyway, let's get on. Enough of my waffling. You can let me know down below. The first one is this most beautiful mother of pearl, genuine mother of pearl. Look at that handle. And it's got a shield and it's got some of these initials. And look, I had the choice of buying one with or without the initials. I went for the one with the initials for two reasons. One, it was cheaper. And two, it's just nice that I know somebody had been bought this or got it done for themselves. This would have been a custom piece. You know, 1911. This is not something you would have found in a wee tobacco shop or a hardware store. This is a custom piece. And there's two reasons I know that. The first reason is the blade. Now, if you can see them markings there, that is the silver markings. This blade is solid silver, solid sterling silver, 925, and it's dated for 1911. Now, it's a fruit knife, and there was makers, knife makers, who just completely, just their whole lives was making silver bladed, Fruit, uh, fruit knives but also a maker worth of salt would have wanted to do this because there was more money in this than just making a, a 1D or a, you know, a sixpence for a knife this is where you would have made good money mother of pearl these things wouldn't have been as freely available they are now today but just to show you some of the things look at that ring bolster can you see the little fine rings that are around that bolster I don't believe the bolster is silver. I believe it's nickel silver. But I've just gone straight through. Look at that beautiful mother of pearl. The iridescence on it is just gorgeous. But look at that back spring. Now, bear in mind, this is all hand done. Look at that. Is that not just so intricate? How long would it have taken to do that? And what sort of a price would you have put on this knife? Back in 1911, I have no idea, but I would say it would have been a right few quid. You know, I would have said this would have been an average man's monthly wage, just about, in fact, probably more than that. But it's just that history that somebody's in this, somebody had had this made for them. And what a proud carry to peel your apple and work, to cut up a bit of fruit, to cut up a bit of meat. Look, it's a, it's a silver blade. They don't hold a great edge, but it's enough to get through soft, the soft flesh of your, your dinner or a wee bit of fruit. But how classy is that? How classy? Still now, 1911, over 100 years old, and it's still a classy looking knife. It still has now. It's got a half stop. 
it has been used too. Don't, don't get me wrong, this knife is not just leather. It hasn't got a big uh, walk and talk, but the half stop is still good. It still opens out and holds all right. Do you know what I mean? It's still quite firm. But that is just a beautiful piece. I am over the moon to have it in my collection. And what did I pay for this? About £30. So I, it's a solid silver blade in a mother of pearl handled knife for £30. Yes, I, I, I spend a fortune on other blades that are modern, but none has got the history of this. None appeals any more to me than what this silly little £30 knife you know, does. It's just gorgeous. It really is. And I'm trying to get ones that are all different, whether in blade shapes or, you know, materials. And I'm doing all right so far. That This bone one I got, the wee um, quill knife, I just love. But that is a beautiful knife. Now, there's no maker's mark. Now, they attributed, I bought this from an antique shop on Etsy. They attributed to a Sheffield maker, but there's no maker's mark on it. So, which makes me lead, you know, it leads me on to think that it was a custom maker, a knife made for somebody who said, no, I don't want none of your, none of your names on it. Just make me the knife. So there we go. A beautiful knife to the collection. This next one is just, it's, it's even nicer than, than this one. Look at the, the work, the craftsmanship on that. This is camel bone, dyed camel bone. But you can still see, now I'm sure it was brighter and crisper, but look at the pins on this. Look at the beautiful, tiny little end caps. I mean, let me just give you a length on this. This, just so as you know, it's exactly three inches. The other one is three and a quarter. So they're, you know, it's not a tiny, it's like, a, it's a bit bigger than a peanut. Now, the blades on it, I haven't touched them yet. I will sharpen them. Look at that blade. There's plenty of use in that blade. It's as blunt as I'll nick itself, but I'll sharpen that uh, with pleasure. So if that blade there's still a bit of snap in them, but I believe this is from the 1800s. Look at that lovely little pen blade. Again, a knife that has been used. Again, the beautiful shield on it. This is not a dollar store knife or an old hardware store. This to me, you know, with a, an exotic bone, um, camel bone on a knife wouldn't have been, you know, wouldn't have been the first one you'd have seen. Look at the back spring on that. Look how well that is after over a hundred years. You have brass liners. It's missing a wee bit of bone in that corner, or maybe there wasn't one there in the first place. But how well has that stayed together? There's nothing. There's no gapping. There's no nothing. A beautiful beautiful piece of knife this one was under 30 pound i think this was 25 pound delivered stunning I, it just blows me away that craftsmanship you're getting to see old craftsmanship and then i'm starting to measure it against my gecs and will they look that good in a hundred years time i hope they will but this is just stunning and i have this and it's over a hundred year old so whoever made this well i actually know who made this one this one is a repeat. I'm just going to get this name right if I can show you it. It's a repeat Needham Brothers knife. Now, the father started in the early 1800s. Um, he then had sons, and I think after the 19th, the 18th, sorry, 18, the early 1800s, the father was born. Um, started making knives, and he was uh, more of a silver fruit knife sort of a man, um, a silversmith, I suppose. But he went in the knife. Then his two sons took over from him in the late 50s, I believe. And then they started the company and that's when it was named. So I don't know when it was made. I think the company actually went into the early 1900s. But again, it's something I can find out about. When I'm old and decrepit and I'm sitting in an armchair, I'll get the books out and I'll find out all this great information. But if you know anything, please let me know. But it's a beautiful, you got again... You've got two lovely little blades. What a well-used little knife. Listen to that snap. It's just, I just think they're gorgeous. So I hope you enjoy seeing them. Um, and I'll show you more if that's what you want. Um, again, it's just a knife. You know, it's, it's a knife channel. So I'm trying to cover as many bases as I have interest in. And I have the interest in these. And it's growing because I don't have the money I had last year. As you know, I had a wee bit of money. But... So to be able to buy a £30 and a £25 knife on Etsy, 
it it gives it, it satisfies that bug for buying knives that I have and I can't get rid of but it's given me a little bit more specific and it gives me a little bit more interest than just going out and buying a CRKT or a, you know, a Ganzo. Yes, they're nice knives, but you can only buy so many. And I bought so many over the time, unless a cheap knife has something that has either. I really like the design. You know, you can't keep buying them over and over again where these are completely different knives. So anyway, a lot of old waffle. I just wanted you to see them. I'm over the moon with them. I think they're two great collection pieces and I'm just going to keep on doing it. But I'm not rushing. I'm only buying what I see, what I like. So there we go. Take care. We Paddy's away for a cup of tea. Thank you so much, my little potato chips. Take care. Bye.